I'm your grade 10 maths teacher. Uh, we are going to continue from where we left off in our last lesson, but we're going to look at applications. All right, applications or the practical aspects of Pythagoras rule. All right, so applications of Pythagoras rule. Okay. For instance, let's have a look at uh, placing a broom against the wall. All right, after you have done sweeping your house, that broom will form a right angle with a or with the wall. Okay, another example would be a person trying to build a fence. Okay, he would need to reinforce his gate all right reinforce his gate with this horizontal team uh, sorry diagonal timber here that is already forming a right angle so you can look for right angle triangles anywhere you look you could find one okay so we're going to see how we can apply pythagoras rule in some of these situations okay now sometimes you may be given a composite shape. Now, what's a composite shape? It's a shape that is made up of more than two other shapes, okay? So we can apply Pythagoras if we are asked to find the perimeter of a, a diagram. Uh, and some, some sides in the diagram are missing. We can apply Pythagoras rule. So I'll put up an example and we have a look at how we can do this, okay? So one example, Let's say this composite shape here. All right, we have a slanted part here. These two are, all right, right angles. Now let's see. If I were given a diagram like this and I'm asked to find the perimeter of that diagram, but one of these sides here has a missing measurement. Okay, that measurement here or distance is unknown, but we see that other lengths are given. Okay, 200 uh, centimeters. And this slanted side here would be 100 centimeters. Okay, so this diagram we can already tell if there are two right angles here, then we might be looking at a square and a triangle. So the composite shape is made up of the square and triangle. How do we find this side here? Applying Pythagoras, we can put a line right here so that we can see the two shapes that this diagram is made up of. Okay, a right angle, sorry, a right angle and a square. In fact, it's, yes, a square. Okay. So we can use Pythagoras here to find x because this measurement here to here is also x. Okay. So let's redraw this triangle. It's going to look like this. All right. With this measurement at 100. Okay, this one here, x, and this one, this side here, how are we going to find this? Okay, you, you have these two measurements here that can help us to give us this measurement. So we can go 200, subtract 120, will give us 
80 centimeters. Okay. Now, we have a triangle with hypotenuse and one short side given. And the other short side is unknown. Okay, let's use Pythagoras. Uh, 100 square. Okay, remember, the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. So 100 square is equal to x squared plus 80 squared. Okay. 100 squared, that's 100 times 100, there are four zeros, so you will get 10,000. Okay, equal to x squared plus 80 times 80 will give us 6,400. All right. We need to bring 6,400 across to this side. So we have 10,000 minus 6,400 is equal to x squared. Now what remains after subtraction now is 3,600 equal to x squared. Okay, take the inverse operation here. So we're going to find the square root of x squared and the square root of 3,600. Okay, this is going to cancel out. Now 3,600, you can see that 3,036 is a square number. So we have root of 3,600 will give us 60, okay? So the missing side here, x, the distance is 60 centimeters, all right? Once you find 60 centimeters, it will be easy for you to find the perimeter now because all the sides now have measurements, okay? Now, this is a composite shape. Other times, you will be given a word problem, okay? A word problem. It's very important that you read through your word problem carefully, okay? And translating it now, you must do this correctly. So the best thing to do is to follow these steps. You draw a neat and clear diagram of what is in the word problem, okay? Once you have drawn your diagram, you get all the measurements that have been outlined in that word problem, put it on your diagram, okay? Also mark in the sides that are unknown. Once you have all that information on a diagram, you now use the Pythagoras rule with the measurements that you find on your diagram, okay? Now we are going to use one example Let's go back to our broom here, okay? Now, if we have, you're done with sweeping, you're trying to do something else, so you store your broom away in a corner of the house, okay? So, let's say, for instance, we have a broom that is about uh, 1.5 meters long, okay? So, our broom is 1.5 meters long. And when we place it on the wall, it reaches a distance of 1.2 meters up the wall. Okay, so you are leaning your uh, broom, which is 1.5 meters, against the wall, and it reaches uh, the wall at 1.2 meters. Okay, what, how, or, let me see, what is the distance? from the broom to the wall, the distance here. Now we can find that. Represent this unknown here with x, okay? So we have, again, a word problem that tells you that you have a broom. After sweeping, you place against the wall, and that broom is 1.5 meters long. It reaches a distance of 1.2 meters when you lean it against the wall. What is the distance from the broom to the wall? Okay, so take this diagram, redraw this. Okay, 
This is x. Your broom is 1.5 meters long. And the distance here is 1.2 meters. Okay. So your information from the word problem is translated to a diagram where unknown is easily identified. So now we use Pythagoras rule to find x. Okay. So 1.5 meters squared is equal to 1.2 squared plus x squared. Okay. Now, although there are decimals here, you should be able to find the square number. Okay. Now, 1.5 multiplied by 1.5, there are two decimal places in the answer. So that's going to be 2.25 equal to 1.2 times 1.2 will give us 1.44, all right, plus x squared. Now we need to bring 1.44 across to this side, so we are going to subtract, all right, 1.44 uh, from 2.25 will give us x squared, all right. Subtraction, 2.25 minus 1.44 is 0 0.81, okay, do the or take the inverse here, so we're going to take the square root of x squared and the root of 0 0.81. Okay, now we've already looked at how to work out the square root of a decimal number. Here, 81, you should already recognize that this is a square number. So, we rewrite this as root 81 over root 100 equal to x. This cancels out. All right. Root 81 is 9. Root of 100 is 10. All right. Equal to x. So the value of x or the distance from the broom to the wall is 0 0.9 meters okay 0 0.9 meters so we have applied pythagoras here in an everyday situation okay the distance from the broom to the wall is equal to 0 0.9 meters or if you want to give your answer in centimeters this will be 90 centimeters equal to x now i must stress here that if your units of measurement are different, say one side is in meters and the other side is in centimeters, you need to make all the units the same. So change to one unit only, then you solve for the unknown. Okay. Another thing I should remind you of here is that by this time, with your own math teachers at your school, you should already have been given the tables of squares and square roots. So numbers that are not square numbers, you can easily go to your tables and find the root. Okay. Now, in our next lesson, we are going to see how to apply Pythagoras rule in 3D situations. Okay, 3D. What is 3D? Where we have three dimensions, length, width, and height. Okay, we'll see you in the next lesson.